In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can create a deck template here in OpenBridge Modeler. And really, the process is the same for barriers and beams as well. So once you know one, you, you pretty much know all three. So here under the Libraries tab, I'm going to go ahead and open up the uh, Dex Library tool. And from this, I'm going to select a folder, and then I'll right-click on that folder. You'll notice there's several choices here, and I'm going to tell it that I want to add a template to the folder. And then it's going to prompt me for the name of this um, deck template that I'm going to create. And I'm just going to call this a, a simple slab. And then we'll select OK. And then it prompts me for a view for the template design. So I'm going to I could use one of these two views or I can open some other view and then data point inside of it and that will go ahead and expand that view and make it full screen for me. From there what I need to do are draw the lines that represent the perimeter of the deck. So I'm going to go to my task menu just pick the place line command and I'm going to start right here on the working point. So this working point is typically where your profile grade line uh, is going to be located on the deck. So I'm just going to hover over it, get the yellow X, which means I'm exactly on it, data point, start my line, and then I'm going to move to the side here. And I could just draw a, a simple rectangle here, or I could give it some actual values. Uh, in my case, I'm going to do a little bit of both. I'm just going to make it flat as far as the slope is concerned, but I am uh, going to go, go ahead and key in a value uh, for the width of the deck. And you'll notice down here uh, I have AccuDraw turned on, so as I'm moving across here it's tracking where I'm at. So I'm just going to type in 20, hit enter, and that locks in a distance of 20 for me. And I want to just go horizontal, so I'm going to stay right where I'm at, data point, and now I can start a new line. So I'm going to come vertically down, and I want to go, let's say, 9 inches. So I'll put in 0.75, hit enter. It locks it into that distance regardless of how far away I am. So I'll data point again. And now I just simply want to come back this direction. Now you'll notice right now down there in the AccuDraw window, X is zero, and that's exactly what I want. I want to, I want to just go horizontal here. So I want to click X on my keyboard to lock in the X value. And then I'll come over and hover over the working point here until I see the yellow X and data point. And then I'll hit a reset because I'm really done drawing the right half of the uh, template. And then I'm going to use the element selection tool and I'll select all three lines and tell the software, okay, I want to mirror these over to the left side. So I'm going to right click and hold down, select mirror, and I'm going to say I want to make a copy about a vertical line as I move over I can see it kind of sliding with me so I want to mirror about this point doesn't really matter which one accept it and then I'll just right click to get out of the command and and finish what I'm doing here so now I've created some simple lines that represent the perimeter of the deck now what I'm going to do is come up here and there's a special little icon that's up here with the other view uh, tools and that says import template for model so I'll select that and say yes and what it does is it simply looks for a path all the way around uh, the deck template whatever that is so we can't have any gaps or overlapping lines or extra lines float around out there we need just enough to make it all the way around so I'll select yes and now it's imported that slab uh, into my template library now if that's exactly what my slab looks like for the length of the bridge, I could stop and use it there as such. Uh, but if I want to make this a little more flexible and potentially use it on multiple projects or, or on projects where things vary, then I need to come back and add constraints to the points that are on this deck template. So for example, point P1 is over here in the upper right corner of the deck. So I'm going to select it from the list here and then tell it for that point right there, I want to add a couple of constraints to it. I want to add a horizontal and a slope constraint. Now horizontally, uh, relative to the working point, this green point right here, uh, it's currently located 20 feet over to the right and relative to the working point it also has a slope of zero at the moment. So I'm going to change the slope here to a negative two percent. And then for each of these you can also assign a variable. So I'm going to say this is the uh, 
uh, right width, for example, and I'll say this is the right slope. Nothing uh, technical or fancy or anything about the names. It's just whatever you want to call them. And then uh, I'm going to tell it that this could also change slope due to some kind of super elevation information. And then lastly for point P1, if you needed to, you could add, let's say, a chamfer up here in this corner. So we have options here to add chamfers, fillets, and even asymmetrical chamfers if you like. And then you just give it a value and it'll add that on there. It's not something you have to draw when you're drawing your template, so kind of keep that in mind. Now before I can modify any of the other points, you'll notice they're grayed out here, I need to save uh, the changes I've made to this point. So I'll save the point. You'll notice uh, the uh, top portion of that deck is now sloped at, at the amount that I specified, but point two didn't move with it. And, and ideally I needed that point to move as well. So for point two, uh, I'll add constraints to it as well, but this time I'm going to use horizontal and vertical. <clears throat> and I'm going to tell it for point two, uh, relative to point one, horizontally I don't want it to go anywhere. I want it to be directly in line with point one. And then vertically, uh, relative to point one, I want it to be nine inches below, like I have here. And I'm just going to call that my uh, deck thickness. Nothing else I need to set here. Again, you could add a chamfer to that point as well. Uh, I don't need to, so I'm going to save it. <clears throat> the next point I'll do, and, and it doesn't really matter what order you do these in, uh, I'm going to do point three, and just like point two, I'm just going to say it's a horizontal and a vertical uh, constraint from the working point, and the vertical amount is the deck thickness. And save that. For point four, uh, it is a horizontal and a vertical from point five. So we'll select point five, and again, that's a deck thickness. And then lastly, here I have point five, which is a horizontal and a slope value relative to the working point. So this is my uh, left width. And this one is going to be my right or left uh, slope, and it's going to be a positive 2%. And it is also potentially controlled from a super elevation point of view, so I'll enable that. And then turn on Save. And you'll now see that I have a uh, simple deck template here, uh, but it is fully constrained. And when we go to place this later on, as long as you turn on Add Constraints, you can modify any of these variables on here and uh, produce uh, the, the deck that you need for your, for your bridge design.